there gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Co channel, and this is a preview of Valerius. Well hey there gamers, it's Professor Meg here, and welcome back to the Board Game Co channel. Today we have a preview of Valerius. Now Valerius is an upcoming crowdfunding campaign, so you can check out their Kickstarter link down below, and you can be notified when they launch, but it has not quite yet launched. But that being said, this is a prototype copy, everything is subject to change, but it'll give you a great idea of how to play the game, and as I said, this is a sponsored video. So thank you to Boss Dog Games for sponsoring this, and with that we are going to explore the world of Valerius. Valerius is a game of interstellar warfare for two to four players where you will be choosing between three action cards every round and you will also be choosing different people to play to your convoy whether they are gatherers or mercenaries and between that combination of things you'll be trying to get the most Valerium possible. Now there is Valerium and Val so Valerium is the bigger blue cubes and the Val is the smaller blue and the difference is is a Val is half of Valerium. Um, so it definitely makes sense what they are, that every two of these is one, and in order to win the game you have to get 21 Valerium. That's the only way you win the game, you just race to 21, and if both players hit 21 in the same round, whoever has the most wins. Alright, so knowing that Valerium is your goal, I'm going to go over the rounds and how you'll be acquiring the Valerium. So each of the players will get their own little moon representing their player color, and you will get three cards, which are War, Peace, and defend. So you can see that this is a round already set up, but looking here, each player at the beginning of the round will secretly choose which of these they want to play. They will all play them face down and then reveal cards at the same time. So you are choosing these actions secretly. I just have everything up on the board for you to be able to see it for the preview. This is it already revealed, but during that time you'll be choosing between these three. So the difference would be for peace. If you choose peace, that means that you don't anticipate being attacked that round and you definitely aren't trying to attack anybody and you would use that to collect one Valerium from the pool. Now if you choose to go to war, uh, we'll get to war in a second for who you are able to target, but when you go to war, if you are the winner, you gain two Valerium uh, and you would take it either from the player that you beat or if they don't have enough, you would take the rest from the bank and you would also be able to take two resource cards from them. Now you, if, the final thing that you would be able to choose is defend. If you choose to defend you actually have to pay a Valerium to the bank, so you would pay one in and you would then not be able to be targeted for war, so it does protect you but it costs you a little bit of money for doing so. So when players choose war, which is what I wake up and do every day, uh, they will get to choose a couple different options. So if multiple players chose peace, they would be able to choose which player they want to attack, but if only one player chose peace, they would attack them. However, if two players chose war, they would then attack each other and see what happens. And when you do choose war, you are adding up a couple different things, so it can be very advantageous to plan for war, especially if you think someone might be coming to attack you. So you can see here in the example, I'll put this card back where it was, but I have a war card, a defend, a defend, and a peace, meaning that both of these players paid to be able to defend this round, and this peace player just didn't anticipate that they would be the one getting attacked. So this orange player here chose war, so for this they would then attack the peace player. Now when players go to war they're going to be able to add their mercenary strength to the war. So the orange player definitely planned to do this and you can see here that they have both of these mercenaries and they add two strength each to the battle. So they are already starting with a four, they would be rolling their two dice and they would be able to use any cards from their hand that might add to that. Now the pink player, they would be rolling their two dice as defense, but they do not have any mercenaries here to help them, so I will show you the roll first, but here we have a seven and a six. So either way, that was a bad roll for the pink player, but regardless, the orange player does have the additional points as well, and the orange player also has in their hand action cards. So the three types of cards are going to be your mercenaries, which are used to add to your war, your action cards, which do a whole plethora of things, and then there are also your gatherers, which we'll get to in a second. But for this action card, you would be able to play Time Warp and re-roll one battle dice. So if the orange player had rolled poorly, uh, or if the pink player had also rolled really, really well, we would be able to take a dice and re-roll it. That's the same result, so it's not that great for us in this case, but, you know, it's an extra option for you to be able to change your rolls. Now to continue with the example, looking at the board, if 
instead this blue player had chosen to do peace instead of their defense card then the orange player would be able to choose between the pink and the blue player who they would like to attack also if the blue player had chosen the war card then the two players would go to war instead and determine the winner now the goal of the game is to get to 21 Valerium, so attacking other players is definitely a way not only for you to gain Valerium, but to actually take it away from other players because you're taking it from the person that you beat. But the next thing you'll be doing is trying to complete missions. You're completing missions by gathering cards, which we'll get to next, and it's what you're doing to go into the moons, get different resources, and ultimately gain Valerium, and these will gain you a good chunk, but take a little bit longer to do. So after all of the war is complete, or if war didn't happen to take place that round, you would then go to the gather resource phase. Players will be using their gatherers to draw these different resource cards to complete the missions. So they have specific symbols here and a certain number. So for this guy, for example, he would draw a jungle biome resource card and then one of any choice. And at the beginning of the game, players are going to draw three mission cards and keep up to two of them. And anytime they have a zero in their hand, they will repeat that process and draw three and keep up to two. So you're constantly able to be able to complete missions and have a little bit of choice over the ones that you're doing. But for our orange player here, we'll say for example, they had this one, which is gravitational stabilizer. So this would cost us two resources from the jungle biome, two resources from the arctic biome, and three resources from the savanna biome. So what that would look like is if this player had used enough of their gatherers over different turns to draw these specific cards, they would need to pay all of these. Hold on, not quite there yet. As I said, these are a bit harder to do, but they do get you quite a bit more Valerium. So as soon as you have this number of cards and these specific ones for this mission, once they were in your hand with your inventory, you would be able to immediately change this in and get five Valerium. So that is how you can get a lot of points going through these different missions. And as you'll have multiple mission cards in your hand, you may be able to draw certain resources such as two Savannah when you only need one and one for different missions that you're completing. So it can be really helpful for the different cards that you're drawing, as well as what you're stealing from your opponents when you choose to go to war with them, because if they have a large number of cards that you need for a specific mission, that may be a reason for you to attack them. Now finally, at the end of the round, players are also able to use Valerium to pay for different elite characters. So there are elite gatherers and elite mercenaries. You can see that this one would add plus four to your mercenaries instead, and this one allows you to draw two of any resource and two of the jungle biome resource. So these are definitely a lot stronger than the base cards that are in the deck that everyone is drawing from, but because of that you are bidding to take them. So all of the bids start at one Val, which is the smaller bit of Valerium, and players will bid to see who would take the cards that are here, and whoever wins the bid would pay into the bank, but whoever loses the bids does not lose your money and it goes back to your resources. So you could lose one bidding and then choose to use the money that you saved from that to bid for the subsequent card. Another Another thing that players will encounter is that when they are drawing cards from these resource decks, there are monsters and artifacts that they will encounter. It is pretty rare, but they will happen when you are drawing the cards and you will encounter them immediately. Wow, um, there's one right on top, but this is Backer's Choice, so this is one where it's a monster that you would need to fight, and when you do so, you would roll the monster die for them. So for example, they would be rolling a 4, not great for them, not too scary. Uh, and then you would be able to roll against them, that's a 7, so you would be able to win. And when you do win against the monster, you're able to take 2 Valerium from the bank. Now if the player had lost instead, that's what this negative 1 would be, that they would actually lose a Valerium for the attack instead. Now the cards will show you how much would be lost, but that's what would happen for that. Now continuing, I'll show you what an artifact would be like. Wow, they're right on top. I swear that these are shuffled. You can see uh, it's shuffled pretty well. but. Uh, so I did want to show you how often they come out, so before I explain artifacts, I will show you a little bit more, just so you can see um, that they aren't that common. You can see now a lot of resource cards are being drawn out. I want to say the majority of the deck is resource cards, and there's only a few monsters and artifacts, and there we go, we finally hit another artifact with, you know, this much left in the deck. So, what the artifacts do is immediately when you draw them, you can make a choice. You can either draw two Valerium, or you can take one Valerium and two resource cards of your choice. So you are able to take resource cards that are working towards your missions, if that's something that you need, or you can just go for Valerium, which is points, because again, whoever gets to 21 wins, and that is an absolute race to the finish. 
overall the pace of play of the game is that players are going to be rushing toward their own personal missions, trying to use specific gatherers to gather what they need for the missions they need to complete to get as much Valerium as possible, but in the meantime it is a real strategic game where you're trying to decide what you think other players will be doing, if it's worth paying to defend, if you want to try to gain Valerium by going through peace, or if you just want to play as aggressive as possible and choose war. Uh, so it's definitely trying to play off what you think your opponents might be doing and what might be best for you in that situation, and perhaps if you can surprise them. For example, I would always play a lot of war cards, but if I didn't, that would certainly surprise my opponents that round, and I could probably choose peace and take peace without them trying to attack. So this has been a preview of Valerius. One final thing I would love to say is that there are four expansions planned. I highly suggest checking out the campaign once it launches because that has a lot more information for it and this has been about the base game, but they have a lot planned for it. So definitely check out what they have in store. Thank you to Boss Dog Games for sponsoring this video. And as a reminder, this was a prototype copy. I've been Professor Mag and thank you all for watching the Board Game Co channel. I really appreciate you and I will see you next time. Bye.